Hi, I'm John Stevenson, and we're going to be looking at Jacob's vision of, of Jacob's ladder in Genesis chapter 28 in our continuing study of the book of Genesis. Genesis 28.10, Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went toward Haran. Jacob is actually on the run. He has to leave home. His family's been staying in Beersheba. His brother's sort of out to get him. And he's now going back to Haran, sort of the family roots. He's, he's just left, and he's on his way, and he, he comes to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set, and he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place. So he's, he's in, can I call it a difficult place? And, and the, using the stone for a pillow is, is a bit of a sign for that. Uh, perhaps the, the lowest point he's ever been so far in his life. And he had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. Now this, this sort of reminds us of those ziggurats, or those great towers that they would have in, in Mesopotamia. Um, with a stairway leading up into the sky. Um, but this isn't a tower. He sees a ladder. And its bottom is on the earth, its top is going up to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And that phrase, angels ascending and descending, is going to be used in the New Testament when there's another meeting. It's Jesus who's first choosing his disciples, and he's chosen Andrew, and he's met Peter, uh, and then he's met Philip. And Philip goes and gets a friend of his, Nathaniel. And Philip says to Nathaniel, hey, we found the Messiah. And he, well, who is he? Uh, he's Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, you know, can anything good for, come from Nazareth? But he comes to see anyway. And he meets Jesus. And Jesus meets him and says, behold, an Israelite in, hi, in whom is no guile. Now, that conversation is written for us in Greek, but it might have taken place in Hebrew. And if so, then the way you would have said, said that, at least one way to say that, would be, behold, an Israelite in whom is no Jacob. And, and Nathaniel and Jesus have this interaction, and, and Nathaniel finally says, gee, I think you are the Messiah, and, and Jesus says, you know, you're too easily convinced. He says, you haven't seen anything yet. What you're going to see, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending. That's the same line. He would have recognized that. But they'll be ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And that's telling us something about this vision, this dream, is that it's representing Jesus. That Jesus is the one who connects heaven to earth. And behold, in the vision, we're back in Genesis 28, 13, and behold, the Lord stood above it, and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. It's the same God that has been introduced to your father and your grandfather. The land on which you lie, on which you're having to leave because of your older brother, the land on which you lie, I'm going to give it to you, to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will also be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and in you and in your descendants, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. Jacob's leaving the land. He's leaving the promised land. But God says, I'm going to bring you back for I will not leave you. Jacob's leaving the land, but God's not going to leave Jacob. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And so the promise, God shows up. He says, I am the Lord. I'm going to give you the land. Your descendants are going to be very many. I'm going to give you lots of descendants. And the families of the earth will be blessed through you. And that's the same promise that God had given to Abraham, to Isaac. But here he adds, and I'm going to be with you even if you leave the land, which he's going to be doing. He's leaving the land right now. So the promise that had been given to Abraham, I want you to notice the structure. God had said to Abraham, I am God Almighty. He, to Isaac, he said, 
I am the God of your father Abraham. Now to Jacob he says, I am the God, the I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. To Abraham he said, For all the land which you see, I will give it to you and to your descendants forever. To Isaac he said, uh, For to you and to your descendants I'll give all these lands. To Jacob now he says, The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. To Abraham he had said, and I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. To Isaac he had said, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven. To Jacob he says the same formula, your descendants shall also be like the dust of the earth. To Abraham he had said, and in, your, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. That had been passed on to Isaac, and by your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed. To Jacob now he says the same thing, and in you and in your descendants all the families of the earth will be blessed. To Abraham, he had said, Do not fear, Abram. I am a shield to you. To Isaac, he said, Do not fear, for I am with you. To Jacob, now he says, And behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go. Isaac had been told to stay in the land. Jacob is told that God's going to go with him, because Jacob's leaving the land, and that's okay. Now, verse 16, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep, and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. You know, isn't it amazing? God is doing something. God is present. And Jacob had been oblivious to it. Sometimes we're oblivious to it too. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Now, the way you say house of God, Beth is the word for house, El. And so he's going to name it in a minute, Bethel. And this is the gate of heaven. Now that's interesting that he calls it the gate of heaven uh, because if you went back to Mesopotamia there was a city there that we saw earlier in Genesis called Babel or we know it as Babylon and in Akkadian, not in Hebrew, but in, in Akkadian the way you say Babylon is gate of God and, and yet Jacob says, no, that's not the gate of God this is the gate of heaven right here because surely the Lord is in this place and I didn't know it Sometimes the Lord makes himself known in an unexpected way when we weren't looking and, and yet God is there. Verse 18, So Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on its top. So he actually anoints the stone. It's going to be a reminder. You can go throughout Israel, and every once in a while you'll find these standing stones. They are stones that have been set up to remind people of different things. And Jacob is starting that practice right here. The stone had been a symbol of his banishment. The fact that he didn't have a, a pillow or a blanket or a tent. He, he'd been using just a stone. And yet that stone that symbolized his banishment is now going to be a sign of his eventual return. It's a sign of the faith that he has, trusting in the Lord to bring him back to the land. And so he anoints the sign as if to say, God's Spirit is going to be bringing me back to this place. He called the name of that place, here it is, Bethel, Gate of God. However, previously we're told the name of the city had been Luz. And so, the gate of God, which is not is going to be significant to that specific place, but it's going to be specific to the entire land of Canaan, because there's a sense in which all of Canaan is going to be the gate of God, the land of God, the land which he brings God's people to, so that the whole world can be blessed through this gate. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me on this journey that I take and will give me food to eat and garments to wear and, and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. This stone which I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. And so he's going to build it is, this is already looking forward to a time when there's going to be a temple. Now, the temple won't be in, in the place, Bethel, but the temple will be in the land. And he says, 
I will surely give a tenth to you, a tithe, as it were, to you, which is something that Abraham had done back in the days when Abraham was there. He had given a, a tenth to this mysterious priest king by the name of Melchizedek. And Jacob says, I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do it as well. And so this calls back to when, when God had given a special portion to Melchizedek through Abraham. And it calls forward to when we do something for God as well.